On today's bonus episode of Locked on Wild, we continue our Wild Fan Spotlight series as we will talk with Broderick Whitman about the Minnesota Wilds, also the Iowa Wild, and the Iowa Heartlanders. We'll give you a full scope of the organizational outlook. All coming up on today's episode of Locked on Wild, we are your team every day. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham and this is Locked On Wild. What is happening, everybody? Welcome in to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss any new episodes throughout the week. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we will roll through another Wild Fan Spotlight with Broderick Whitman talking about the Minnesota Wilds and also the Iowa Wild and Iowa Heartlanders. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your best bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, credentialed Wild Media member. And as mentioned, we continue our Wild Fan Spotlight series. Broderick Whitman joining us here today. Uh, you may know him more by his uh, YouTube alias at Jeremy McDude. Uh, and so, Broderick, welcome in. Glad to have you. How are things going? Uh, pretty good. Uh, it's a bit cold down here, but, you know, where isn't it cold up in the Midwest? Um, so, yeah. uh, one of the... I, I'm I'm more of a Iowa Heartlanders fan, but that's kind of where things start because they're affiliated with the Minnesota wild and the quad city mallards previously were affiliated with the Minnesota wild. And that's kind of where I got into, uh, uh, at least fandom with the Minnesota wild before that I was just almost a, almost a, uh, free for all for which team I actually liked. So sure. Um, unfortunately at one point that also included the Dallas stars. So that's, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a odd one, but, uh, one of the things that I thought would be interesting to talk about is just in general, the, the state of the, uh, the state of the lower level leagues. So the ECHL and the AHL with the Heartlanders and the Iowa wild. And so looking at, looking at things, if, uh, you go, go through the season of the Heartlanders, they've had a much better season than they have at least last year. Uh, comparable yeah. to the first, comparable to the first season, and right now they're not in the greatest position. Uh, their points per game is sitting at about one, uh, sitting under five hundred, so they're under five hundred uh, points percentage. Everyone else in the central is barely over five hundred, except for Toledo, who's leading by nearly seventy five, seven hundred fifty percent, or seven. 750 i don't know exactly 75% in their in their points percentage and so the 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 issues where the heartlanders haven't had some good points in the game especially during that spate of injuries with the with the minnesota wild that really did hurt system wide the the whole the entire system kind of kind of fell but i think the heartlanders have a chance they play kalamazoo which is one of the teams that they absolutely have to leapfrog over they play them twice in kalamazoo they play I believe it's the indie fuel directly after and that's another team that they have to leapfrog so if they can at least string a couple of wins together against the teams that they're playing right now then they'll have an absolutely you know they'll absolutely have put themselves back into a position where they can potentially make the postseason for the first time sure um let's let's just keep it let's keep it on the heartlanders here for for now because i i have some questions i've got some legitimate questions for you regarding iowa the other the heartlanders um who have been some of the bright spots for the heartlanders so far this season i mean like you said it's just been organization wide that uh 
everybody is is kind of going through a bit of a struggle. And obviously with injuries to Minnesota, that strained the Iowa Wild roster, which in turn strains the Heartlanders roster. So who to this point have been some of the bright spots for the Heartlanders so far? Well, there's one player that I want to say, but he hasn't been with the Heartlanders for the entire season, even though we signed him early on. And Gavin Hain, he's been with the Iowa Wild for basically the whole season so far. <laughs> <laughs> so I really couldn't tell you how how well he's done. Um, there's also there's a uh, Pavel Novak. He came off of a season where he had you know nothing but nothing but having to deal with cancer for the entire year, and to come back this year and actually do as well as he's been doing is fantastic to see. Yes, uh, Louis Boudon, who's also been a joy to watch. He's he is an absolutely great forward he's not signed with minnesota but he is signed with the iowa wild so that could potentially be uh i'm not, I'm not gonna say a prospect but he's he's currently 25 years old but he is definitely a player that uh has helped this team quite a bit and if we didn't have him i don't think we would be in the same spot uh and then uh goaltending wise peyton jones and drew de ritter have just held down the fort with hunter jones they've you know Hunter Jones, I wouldn't say is a bad goalie either, but he's just not shown, I guess, a whole lot of progress. And I don't know if that's a, if, if that's an issue with uh, the way some of the goaltending has been brought up. And then obviously Wallstead, who who essentially took his place right. when, when they drafted when they drafted him. So uh, it's it's been a pretty good pretty good thing. Uh, pretty good. Uh, I don't want to say that. It's been pretty good on the goaltending side of things. So uh, other than a few just kind of absolute stinkers of games, for the most part, everyone's kind of running a decent uh, decent stat line. At least DeRitter and Peyton Jones are above uh, 900 in the save percentage. Everyone's hovering around 3 GAA. So it's uh, it's been fun to watch those guys too, especially considering we haven't seen them at all before around here. Well, and it's, you know, it's, Interesting too on the the Heartlander side of things, we we all I, I forget that they were a startup organization, like came up from absolute nothing, and so it's it's going to take you a little bit to just even get your organizational like feet wet, so to speak. And so the fact that there have been players that have been able to perform well here uh, early on, because I I believe it was. Was it two years ago that the Heartlanders came to be, or um... yeah, it was a twenty twenty one was the first year of operation, either that or twenty twenty. I don't. I think it was twenty twenty one, the first year that they actually started playing. Yeah, so a, an organization that's still in its very infancy, um, but still is uh, is producing some results. It's just you know, I we, as much as we look at all these teams, it just seems like all of them are suffering from the same things at this point in the season. Just injuries have injuries have not said we're going to single out the Minnesota wilds. Like we're just going to go up and down the list and everybody's going to have to deal with it all year. And I mean, the, the, uh, the heartlanders have had some injuries, but it's not been like what we've seen up at Minnesota up, yeah. uh, up in Des Moines with the Iowa wild. That is, that is just, uh, caused a chain reaction of call-ups and players from the Heart Iowa Heartlanders. They even at one point didn't have any any players from the teams above them had to uh, bring in a player from the Heartlanders that had been signed to the Heartlanders named Davis Kosh, who unfortunately he was he's the highest points points producer for the team and uh, is now playing in Germany. So that's another, that's another thing you got to watch out for is players going to Europe from the ECHL and the AHL. So that's, that's something that you don't see in the NHL at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been one thing or the other with, uh, with every team in the organization. And so i um, glad to hear that uh, there's been some success at the Heartlanders level. Let's talk a little bit about the Iowa wild, because as you alluded to, Broderick, there's been a lot going on uh, with the <laughs> Iowa Wild so far this season, and so we'll, uh, we'll we'll talk about the Iowa Wild as we continue our Wild fan spotlights coming up after this here on Locked On Wild. 
Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Folks, Super Bowl Sunday is quickly approaching, and FanDuel is here to help you celebrate. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some unbeatable bets. Some of my favorites throughout the Super Bowl include who's going to score the first touchdown, who is going to score more points in the third quarter, and just as a side, I love to try to figure out what color the Gatorade bath is going to be for the uh, victorious head coach. So there are no shortage of ways for you to get involved by betting on Super Bowl 58. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. Plus, new customers who join today will get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Seth Topol joined by Broderick Whitman. And note for the listeners, we have uh, a couple of additional fan spotlights that we'll be recording uh, between now and next week. Um, Mike is going to uh, to hop in and uh, have his turn at uh, co-host in the show. That'll be recorded on Sunday. And so if there's anything that you would like to hear from Mike, uh, just drop a line in the comments and we'll make sure that uh, we get his thoughts on uh, all sorts of things as we record over the weekend. Broderick, let's take a look at the Iowa Wild because the Iowa Wild have been the taxi squad for Minnesota so far <laughs> this season. It's It's been crazy because, and I'm so glad that you... Uh, you picked for your avatar Dakota Mermis because <laughs> believe it or not, Dakota Mermis was selected as the Iowa wild captain this year. And he's played a, a couple of games with Iowa so far. It's otherwise it's been in, exclusively Minnesota, but that's, that's just how the story's gone this year. Yeah. I just pulled up the, I just pulled up the, the total stats and uh, he has five total games with the Iowa wild this year. Boy, oh boy. So he's he's been with Minnesota pretty much the whole year. And uh, I'm I'm not gonna lie, I kind of enjoy it. I you know, he's been yeah. playing very well in Minnesota. So in comparison to what we could be seeing in the on the defensive end, uh those uh, guys those guys that are not going to be named. <laughs> we're, not gonna have... name, we're not gonna bring those guys up because this yeah. isn't this isn't that time. No, we don't need to. We don't need to elevate my blood pressure anymore. I mean, there there are some there are some uh, trade. There there is a trade that we could make. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that name either. Save that for the next uh, next stream. <laughs> <laughs> so with the Iowa with the Iowa Wild, uh, currently I've been looking at it, and this is the the worst thing about it. the The points percentage is the second lowest in the entire AHL. However, they're currently sixth in the division, and they only have to be in fifth because of the insanity that is the AHL playoffs so playoffs format. And it's it's strange to me how, for some reason, this team has 14 wins, 24 losses, three in overtime, and they still have at least some semblance of a chance with uh, about 30 games left in the season. And the team that they have to beat, at least right now, is the Chicago Wolves with 15 wins. And and uh, I think they have three games on hand. So and then and then if they actually turn on, turn things on and actually start winning games for once, at least this month, January was awful. I think they won two games in the entire month of January. Oh, boy. Oh, man. At least they beat the Texas Stars, who is second in, in the uh, division right now. But it's very far second to Milwaukee, who has just been as good as Toledo has been in the uh, in the ECHL. It's... And one of the things I do want to bring up, too, is with the Isle of Wild... I find that there might be some issues with why why maybe the team in Minnesota has not done well in the playoffs, and it's because Iowa Wild has never made the playoffs aside from twice. 
And this is and this is the kind of thing you're bringing up some players and like half the forward core in Minnesota is Iowa Wild is former Iowa Wild players. They've never really made it to the playoffs until they made it to the NHL. You know, that is that is a great point, because if you don't have even a little bit of a taste of what it takes to and it's not like it's not even necessarily what it means to play in a in a playoff game per se, but what it takes to like, okay, we're going to push. Like we have to, we got to really kick the jets up. We got to win 10 out of 10 out of 12. Like if you've never really had a taste of that, you can't really translate it to anything at the NHL level. So that I'm a, that's a great point is that it just has been something that not only has happened in Minnesota, but it's, it has gone all the way down all the way down to the the lower levels of the organization is that there just there has not been what we would call postseason success to date. Yeah, there there really hasn't been any postseason success. And even going as far down to the ECHL level, but there's not as much turnover between there. But even the even when the Mallards were playing for for uh, the Minnesota Wild as their affiliate in the, in the lower levels, they they'd make the playoffs in in those levels, but they wouldn't really do much once they got in so maybe maybe win a series or two but that that's you know here and there but that's just kind of been i guess the mo of this whole organization is make the playoffs and then just don't go anywhere once you get in (laughs) and if you're the iowa wild don't even make the playoffs unless you know you actually have a decent decent run of things i have no idea how that they've just looking looking through it the team was mate was uh, brought in from Houston, which is another weird thing. The stars left and the wild came back <laughs> in both both Minnesota and in Iowa, which is which is the craziest thing. From 2013 to 2018, they didn't even make the playoffs, and then they won. They uh, made it to the conference semis in 2018-2019. So it was that long of a spate of just not making the playoffs, and then. Obviously, all the craziness happened between then and last year, which they yeah. lost two games out of a three-game play-in round to Rockford because the AHL playoffs is just insanity. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then, like we were talking before we hit record, I why would you go seven in a division, seven in a division, eight in a division, and ten in another? Like. I don't know. Seems like maybe just spread them out, even them out. Yeah, that that's enough. That's one of the weirder things. And then another thing too is that like they claim that they want to give more teams opportunities to have playoff sort of play some playoff hockey. The problem is you're giving most of the teams three games to play in the playoffs, and then they're gone for the for the remainder of the year because it's like. It's it's almost like the March Madness tournament where you have that first round that's not actually a first round. It's just <laughs> trying to fill out the rest of the bracket. That's what that first round in the AHL playoffs is. It's a three-game play-in for the teams that were at the bottom of the barrel in their division. Iowa legitimately made it last year because they finished fourth in the division. So that, that to me, at least ma- means that they should have been in that actual first round. Yeah. But then they got swept by Rockford. So I... I'm questioning whether they pl- even plan on making it, but hopefully they can start stringing some wins together and actually, you know, give themselves an opportunity to make the playoffs this year. And see, herein, herein, I think lies a big part of the issue that we're currently seeing with the Minnesota Wild um, team not winning hardly at all at points throughout this season is the thing that then all of us want to do is to turn focus to, okay, what are we seeing in, uh, what are we seeing at at Iowa? What are we seeing down with the the heartlanders? And the situation down there has been pretty similar to what we've seen up top. It's just, I I would ask you who have been some of the better performers of this Iowa wild team so far this year, but we've seen all of them. Like they've all played in Minnesota. The only two that you haven't seen playing in Minnesota are Adam Beckman and, Quite uh, quite happily, uh, Mason Shaw. He's been fantastic in the first few games back since he's got gotten off that injury. Yeah, and that's that's just a 
if you're looking for the like shining light stories throughout the organization, Mason Shaw is a good one. Um, working his way back from a fourth ACL surgery, many of us would be done after one. I don't know how he does it, man. <laughs> I I I look forward to getting a chance to uh, to hopefully ask him in the near future because. It would be I would suffer one and I'd be like, I'm that's it. I can't do it. Can't come back from that. Like, I, I just some guys are just built different. And, and Mason Shaw apparently is built way more different than anyone else has ever <laughs> in, in sports, I guess. Just a, just not willing to take no for an answer, which honestly, I applaud it. I would love to see more of that throughout the organization. He's an absolute tank, and I think and I think we uh, should be glad that we even have him to begin with. So, yes, one hundred percent of the other players that I think have shown some shown some pretty good pretty good play. David Spacek has actually been an interesting one. He's at one point was in the Heartlanders system for some reason, and then like two games back then he comes back up to the Iowa wild and I don't know if it was just from bad play at that time or if he might have been doing a uh, a conditioning stint but he's actually shown some pretty good uh defensive uh prowess and considering he's only 20 years old he's got a lot to go and he could potentially grow into a decent defenseman if uh if the wild actually work him out a little bit you know he he, he has the potential I would say yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm glad you talked. You brought up defense because I wanted to ask you, since you've had a more keen eye than uh, than I have per se. What uh, what have we seen so far this year from the um, the key names in the defensive department? Uh, Carson Lambos and Ryan O'Rourke. Uh, if I look at the stats, I don't think you want to like. I, I don't think you would uh, like the plus minus, and I know plus minus is considered like the worst of the defensive stats. But when your plus minus is 20, negative 20 for Ryan O'Rourke, you're not having a good year, at least not on the defensive side. He's not really provided much on the offensive side. He's 46 penalty minutes in 40 games. So you can plan on getting at least a minor per game, but it could also be that he might be with Simon Johansson, which he was also a minus like 40 something last year. And it's, I I don't know exactly. I don't even know if it's Ryan O'Rourke's fault at that point, but you, you kind of get, get into the same issues, I think, with the Minnesota Wild defensively, mm -hmm. where they're just not trying very hard, and you can tell that they're not trying because in the game against uh, the game that I had gone to when you guys were hanging out with Denny on the uh, 27th, uh, they, they let in a just an easy power play goal. It was kind of the same thing we saw when, uh, when uh, that first power play goal against uh, Minnesota, when they were playing Arizona, oh. similar, similar kind of thing, just didn't get in front of the puck at all on the cross feed. And then the next goal was a three on one that one of the, one of the San Diego players bounced off of McIntyre's pads to get the rebound. And it went perfectly onto the stick of another San Diego player. And if you're, if you're saying McIntyre, you're just getting nothing from your defense in that situation. And I, yeah. I just, I just don't know how. And the weird thing is the Iowa wild will go down like six, nothing and then come back and make it a game of make a game of it. That's the weirdest thing. At least the Iowa wild can claim. Yeah. We, you know, had a bad game, but at least we put some points on the board. Whereas Minnesota would just crumble <laughs> entirely and then, you know, lose a game after leading for two periods. And just, I, I, there, yeah. there are some massive issues on all sides of this. Yeah, Another it's one. Uh, every level. <laughs> I, I was going to say one thing that uh, maybe could be contributing to it is just the coaching staff in Iowa is brand new. Yeah, and that's a very good point. Inter interesting fact, too, is that Brett McLean actually played for the same franchise when they were in Houston. So that's a. Wow. That's actually that's actually quite cool. He was the assistant coach for a while. Then he went up to Minnesota. I think 
for a couple seasons, either one or two. It was, and then and now I he, think it was two, and then things now did he's, not now go he's well. the head coach. Yeah, things did not go well with the power play, and so they said, "Hey, we're not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna let you go per se, but we'll let you go down to Iowa to take over." A reshuffling, yeah, as it were. To be fair, I kind of appreciate it for the fact that Tim Army is no longer the coach in Iowa, just as a Heartlanders fan, because I have a few uh, conspiracy theories about what went on last year, considering the Heartlanders last year basically did not get a lot of support from the Iowa Wild. And oh. it could have been an issue with uh, the fact that Tim Army's son was coaching in Wheeling. And is still coaching in Wheeling. I'm not going to say I confirm that, but that's a bit of a conspiracy theory that I have. That there could have been a few. Uh, could, when when you look at the Iowa Wild roster and you see 18 forwards and most of them are healthy scratching, why aren't they down in the ECHL? Yeah, that's, that's the kind of questions you got to ask when you're when that's happening. That does seem like you'd want them to at least get playing time somewhere. Yeah, and. That's that's why I've been glad that uh, Brett McLean has been the coach. Maybe I don't even know if it was a coaching thing, but they've been fantastic in in uh, moving players down that they see could use some work and actually, you know, could actually get some playing time in instead of just sitting up in the third level of the stands in uh, Wells Fargo Arena. Well, good. I'm I'm glad that that's kind of a you know silver lining is that there is a little more communication between the two as opposed to what there had been previously. Oh. And one, one, I think final thing, I don't know if Minnesota fans are going to like this, but I feel like at least right now, maybe not right now, but if they, if the Iowa Wild actually do come back and start getting a chance at making the playoffs, I'd rather see Mason Shaw and Adam Beckman with the Iowa Wild in an attempt to make a playoff team out of it. Instead of going up to the Minnesota Wild, where they're just going to end up on a team that's just not going to go anywhere. And then another thing, too, if you bring those guys up, then you might as well just say, hey, Iowa Wild, your season's done, too. So, you know, good good luck with the rest and we'll take your best guys. So that's that's a bit of a, a reason why I would think that they should keep those guys down in Iowa, because then they have a chance to actually make the playoffs. And then that is a good not talked about as much aspect of this is are you like, cause here's, here's the other part of it too. Let's consider if you are Adam Beckman, for instance, are you going to be playing top minutes in Iowa or fourth? Probably going to be minutes? on the fourth line. <laughs> yep. Read my mind on, uh, on that aspect. So, I mean, if Iowa is in position to push for a playoff spot, I say all the more power to them because at this point, unless there is a trade that involves Brandon Duhame, Pat Maroon, or Connor Dewar at this point, if you don't make if you don't free up spots there and with Murat Houston Dinoff, who's Nadinoff? I did it again. Who's Nadinoff? <laughs> um with him now anticipated to be heading to the NHL before the season is done. If that gets confirmed that that's happening, then that's a spot you have to free up up top. So I, you know, if it's, if it's going to be that they play more consistently in Iowa, as opposed to getting a fourth line spot and playing like six minutes a night in, in Minnesota, all the more power to them. Yeah. I think, I think they'd probably be better served playing in Iowa and, playing those top line minutes is similar to Marco Rossi last year when he was sent down. Although I don't know if I completely agree with that decision, but you know, this it's last year. We can't really change that. Yeah. He was doing very well with, with the team playing top line minutes, getting those reps in and doing basically whatever he thought he had to do to get back up to the NHL. The, the issue you do run into, like most people have been saying though, is like, you know, where's Adam Beckman's chance at the NHL? And maybe you, you, that's a, that's a point where you say as like a coach or as a GM, you tell him, you guys still have a chance to make the playoffs. You know, we want you there so that way you can 
do some winning instead of sitting up doing fourth line minutes and not really doing much. Yeah. I do have a bit of a hot take that's never going to happen, which I think would be funny because if it did happen, but it's not. Uh, is Brock Faber allowed to go down to the AHL? <laughs> Please help. <laughs> That would be insane, but it's never going to happen. And I'm, and I'm just, <laughs> I've been thinking about that all week. Here would be this. Here would be the stipulations that would have to happen if he <laughs> was brought. If he was sent down, and it like like Broderick said, it's not going to happen. But it's never going to happen. We're we're in the midst of a season in which the the Minnesota Wild are not going to the playoffs, and so we just we we talk about things that that make everybody laugh, like. If he were to get sent down to try to inject some some help into um, Iowa for the postseason, what would need to happen is it would need to not be announced before it was happening. Oh, yeah. It'd need to be like spur of the moment thing. Then you play Stone Cold Steve Austin's entrance music with the glass <laughs> breaking and he just skates onto the ice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would actually love that the first game he was he just shows up randomly. And with that, with, get, a, with um, an entrance, with an entrance song, you can get Ben Gislason, who a hundred percent would play along with the bit, doing the Jim Ross and being like, "Wait a minute, that's Brock Favors' music. What is he doing here? <laughs> What's he doing here?" Uh, I think you could do the same thing if you decided, "Hey, Marco, you want to go down and maybe play some more playoff hockey?" <laughs> What is Kirill Kaprizov doing here? I don't, I don't, well, Kirill, I don't think you can get, get away with that one, but you know, those two, those two guys, uh, Rossi and uh, Faber are still an entry level deal. So at least somewhat makes sense in that regard, but yeah, it's at least, it's at least something that wouldn't be super crazy. And then but, you'd get the other extreme of that where you'd send, you, you would wave John Merrill. Nobody would claim him. So he goes to Iowa and then everybody would literally be like, what is John Merrill doing here? It'd be, it'd be like the moment uh, going to the WWE parallels. It'd be like when Triple H got the one announcer to come out. And when he like first took over from Vince McMahon, don't, don't, don't look into any of the, the recent stuff. No. <laughs> oh God. But uh yeah, I think it would uh, it would be it would honestly be crazy, but it would be nice to know that the Minnesota actually cares that much about the Iowa Wild to get them a get them a shot to uh, win some games at the end of the year. But my biggest thing would be like you know, yeah, he can play on a team that actually has prospects of winning a championship, but then also, or maybe not a championship, but getting into the playoffs. But then you also got to think, you know, is he going to get injured playing in the AHL? And that's the one thing that you would say doesn't really work out with that one. So, yeah, that you, don't would want, be... you don't want your best defenseman getting injured playing in the uh, playing in the minors when he can just as easily do that playing in the NHL. So, correct. Yeah. So that as much of a as much of a fun, like a funny, just oddity for that to be this season, it's it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, no, that's that's why I was just kind of it's more of a what if this would happen kind of yeah. situation and that it would be cool. You know, oh, I'd, sure. you know, they'd make tons of tons of money on an auction for that jersey or something like that. But, you know, that that would just kind of be mm, <laughs> fever, fever dream level of just please make this happen if, <laughs> if at all possible, if I could. If I could get something, some like over, over, if the hockey gods were looking down on us with their, their best graces kind of thing. One of those multiversal <laughs> happenings. There probably is. There probably is a universe in which that has happened <laughs> or is happening. Well, hopefully in that universe, Iowa wins the cup. But, uh, <laughs> Broderick, we appreciate the time here today. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for being one of the uh, elite contributors to the Lockdown Wild comments section. Uh, before we wrap up here for today, any questions you have for me? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. Um, do you watch a whole lot of minor minor league hockey at all? When I can, 
um, when I have the opportunity, which is fleeting, um, <laughs> it's more so me just kind of trying to get caught up as to what we what has happened with particular with Iowa, either the Wild or the Heartlanders. It's more so me getting caught up after the games have already happened. Yeah, I do know that if I don't know how many people do have uh, subscriptions on uh, Flow Sports, but you can get pretty much every ECHL game. On Flow Sports, if you have that if in your uh, in your possession, Ooh. you can get ECHL. There's a lot of college games I've seen on there. I don't think Minnesota, for those of you who live in like the Minneapolis St. Paul area, I don't think Minnesota plays. I don't know how the college. I don't know a lot of people's college things because it, it's like down here we have Iowa, Iowa State, and UNI, and UNI is kind of like the 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 third wheel that no one really talks about. <laughs> <laughs> they're just happy to be here i will say though you can also get ushl if you if you're interested in future prospects because that's another thing too that you could watch on flow Ooh. uh you could catch some uh players from down here in the state of iowa that are not from the state of iowa but are playing here uh i know that uh and then uh, another that I remember, there's a lot of there's a lot of NHLers that have come through the USHL. Joe Pavelski is one of the few that I remember right offhand. So that name rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turns on a lot of red lights, I hear too. So, uh, well, in my nightmares. Yeah, I. If if we don't if we don't run into the Dallas Stars in a postseason series for the rest of my life, I'm that's oh not, man, that's not. I was hoping enough. last year that they would run into uh, run into Winnipeg because that was a team that we actually was beating constantly. Yeah, that would have been that would have been the year to go against the Jets. This year is not the year. No, no, it is not. This is the year that you stay away from the Jets as much as possible. Yeah. Then again, we're not going to have to worry about who we play in the postseason because. <laughs> It's not we're, gonna not, we're not really playing in the full season. I don't yeah. think that year. We're going to be watching the matchups unfold. Oh, so. man. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see how things play out, but uh, we'll definitely have to do this again as the season unfolds. Um, appreciate you hopping on, Broderick. And uh, again, we thank you for being one of the elite portions of the Locked on Wild comment section. Yeah, I appreciate you doing this too, Seth. This is actually, a, I guess, a really good idea. Seems like a lot of people are enjoying it, so. Yeah, shout out to Denny from Prior Lake for uh, for coming up with the idea. And as I told Jesse Pierce on Twitter today, I said anything that gets me to yell a little bit a little bit less. Although we did talk about <laughs> him, anything that gets me to yell a little bit less at thirty three or four is probably a good idea. Yeah, really. So, uh, listeners, if you would like to be part of a future episode of Locked On Wild, all you have to do is email. Locked on wild at gmail.com and we will get you locked in to a future episode. As mentioned, Mike is going to take his turn on Sunday. So if you have anything that you would like discussed with Mike or Sunday's episode, just drop it in the comments here for today's episode and we'll make sure to get to that over the weekend. Uh, also make sure to like this video before you hop out for the day and make sure to subscribe. If you have not already, you can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.